Hello YouTube, welcome to the Dojo! You're here with Samurai Man, and today we have the Transformers Warbotron Airburst figure. And he's a very nice rendition of the Blast Off. They are doing the third party third party combiners Bruticus. Which I guess is being called Warbotron. They didn't really come up with an official name for their Bruticus, but Warbotron works. But that's the name of their company. But whatever. I mean I guess it's the name of their company and their first combiner. But here you go, very nice. Lots of nice detailing, molding on it. Lots of paint. The this is their first figure, and there are issues with it. Their their first set does have its issues. They do seem to be working out the kinks as each figure comes along. I notice, but Airburst being the first, he does have some pretty bad issues. Not horrible, not like unforgiving issues. Just stuff to keep in mind when purchasing. It's not like you shouldn't get this set just because this one's not so great. Because, I mean, you might get a second run of it and it might be a little better. But, just to note, there are issues. So, first of all, uh, there's a lot of tightness on him. He's very tight as far as his joints and everything. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a little too tight. So, that means there are good amount of stress marks on this guy particularly here on the front this is all clear plastic where the cockpit area is it's very nice clear plastic by the way it's very nice Decepticon purple form so I do like that and then the way it works is for transformation you would bring up the nose cone here and there's a hinge right here you can see a double hinge one there and one here and the way it works is there's a tab right here at the nose cone area and you can kinda of see it looks like it's been chipped that's because there was a little hook at the end of the tab. Right now it's a perfect rectangle. Perfect rectangle. There used to be a little edge part, like a little part that stuck out for like a hook that would grab onto this little tab hole. Now the problem with that is it was this connection, everything going on here when you had that going on and this going on, that was so tight, bringing this all around, that I guess that created a giant crack here at the front of the windshield. You can kind of see, you can kind of see it right there. It's pretty bad. There's a crack going around here. And I didn't see it at first, and I was looking at it, I was like, wow, that's really bad because this is clear plastic. So now, eventually, one day, this will probably end up breaking off entirely, and then he won't have this front nose cone. And I don't know, maybe I could fix it somehow. I'm thinking I can maybe, if I can get a, a like, I have a soldering blade, I guess you'd call that. I'm thinking maybe I can use that to kind of mesh this back together and get the crack here to like kind of close up. If not, I'll leave it for now and then I'll try, you know, liquid cement. Maybe that'll help out, but it's such a weird crack. I don't know. But yeah, when I was like pushing this in, I noticed there's pressure and it was causing the crack to spread. And then eventually that little hook just ended up breaking off entirely. Which is fine, because that hook actually was adding too much pressure. The way it is now, perfect. It's not going anywhere, it's not flopping about, perfect. It's 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 in there exactly how it should be. With the hook in, it was causing too much stress and all that, so it was actually kind of a good thing that came off. But yeah, I just wish that this didn't happen. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. There are other tightness issues. There are a little bit of stress marks here. You can see this is a, a hinge piece right here, flap, but... Yeah, just stuff like that going around, that's, that's an issue. But other than that, it's not bad. As far as design goes, paint scheme, you know, all that overall look, it's good, it's great. The art mode's fine. Everything about it is nice. It's just that that's an issue. But yeah, just want to get that out of the way now just so you know what you're getting into. But anyways, you can see there's it's a brown. Obviously, you know, Blast Off is brown, so they made Airburst brown. With some purple highlights, very nice. I, like I said, I like the clear plastic here. It's got some kind of cool looking vents things going along here. Dark purple for the nose cone. It's got some like, I guess, silver tanks on the side. I don't know if those may be like fuel tanks or anything. It's got little yellow bits at the wings you can see here, here, and here at the back of the fin. Very nice. I like this how it has a dark purple and then painted in a lighter lavenderish purple coming along the side. So yeah, just nice little silver highlights, nice little purple bits. So. I think they did a good job. It's got nice thrusters here at the back. They did some silver painting on that. I, I really like this. They have like purple thrusters, and on the inside they painted it silver. I really do think that's cool. That's a nice little touch. And you got some gray bits here. It's just more mechanical detail going on. So very nice overall. It looks pretty darn fancy. Very cool. And he does have some wheels. He has landing gear here. They kind of work. 
but he, that's all he has. He doesn't have any back landing gear, so it's kind of useless. It's just there just to prop him up, basically. Eh, let's get the job done. If that's what they meant to do it for, he gets the job done. But you can see there is his face. There is Airburst's face. It's it's not that big a deal. It's kind of whatever. I, I don't really feel too bad about it, but eh, it's there. So there you go. Very nice looking little, what's it going to call it? Uh, bleh, rocket ship. Very nice looking rocket ship. I think it's pretty cool. They did a good job on it. It's pretty hefty size, so that's also good. But let's go ahead and transform them and see what we can do. So transform them. I'm just going to start by removing the wings. Yes, there are some parts forming. I don't know if you really need to take them off, but I just think it's easier. Now we have them in a submarine mode. Kind of looks like it could be a submarine mode. So there is that. Go ahead and take off these bits. Yes, more parts forming. Take off the whole back section there. Yes, parts forming. Yes, but it's alright. I forgive it. And then we're going to go ahead and actually let's flip up the landing gear. We really don't need these there. There you go. We'll take this bit here and remove it to the back. And just kind of let it sit for now. We'll take these shoulder, well what would be the shoulder bits, and bring them down. And they're on ball joints, so you want to rotate them like that so you can expose the head. Next up, we're going to take these bits here, untab them. They tab into the thighs right there. You can see the tab and they go in right there. Kind of flip them up. Get them out of the way, and then you want to use that to kind of push these out of the way so that you get this panel here to move. You can see, bring this up here. This will expose the arms. There you go. So you just want to get this out of the way, expose the arms. Now you want to do is, you can see the arm, the shoulders here kind of are supposed to rotate outward. So you just bring them around, rotate them out like that, you can see, and then do the same on this side. It kind of gets cl uh, cluttered at the shoulder area you can see with all this going on but it's not too bad you can work around it then take these panels that we had before close them up that makes some nice little arm details for him bring out the fist they just flip out big surprise something we've seen a million times but it's it is what it is not crazy about the flip out fists we see it almost on not every toy but like every other toy at least every other toy has flip out fists but yeah, you kinda just have to get over it there you go, got the hands out like that. So now we've got this cool shoulder armor. I do like how the front of the space shuttle became the shoulder armor. I thought that was cool, or like the midsection, I guess. That's actually a nice touch. I think that's pretty cool looking shoulder armor. So very nice use of the, the shuttle. So there you go. Take these panels here. I guess these are like the doors. They kind of look like doors. Just fold them in. Ta-da! And then you kind of just have to let it sit. It doesn't really go anywhere. Just kind of sit it there. You don't see it from the front, at least for the most part. If you can get things in the proper orientation, you shouldn't really see it from the front. Yeah, it's kind of pretty well hidden. You don't really see it. Then just bring this down, and then bring this like that. Originally, I thought this might have been the reason why that cracked, because you have to fold it up. But it doesn't go that much. There's not, there's no pressure at all, so I'm pretty sure it's from the thing I said before, because there I definitely noticed pressure. But from here, not really. I mean, maybe I might have leaned it up against something, or it fell maybe, and that happened. I don't know, but that could be another thing. So nothing, another thing to keep in mind. Then, extend out the legs. Again, another thing we've seen a million times. There you go. Just make sure it clicks. So that way you can keep it or else it'll slide around. So there you go. You want to keep this joint exposed, that knee joint. That's how you know you've gone far enough. Flip the thrusters out as heel spurs. Bring down the feet. They're on ball joints. This is another one of those tightness issues. What you want to do is rotate this foot. It's on a mushroom peg. You can see right there. And you want to rotate it. And the, the left one is fine. I don't really have any concerns with the left foot. The right one is super tight. So instantly I rotate it and it's so tight it pops off, which isn't a big deal. But it, it does have some stress marks going along the sides there. If you can see, I don't know if you can really see. You kind of see that how it gets lighter there at the top, that stress mark. That's an issue. So I might have to shave this down. I'll probably end up doing that. And then I usually, usually it'll just pop off and then I'll just push it back on, which... It's just annoying to do because it kind of hurts my fingers, honestly. When I want to push this back on, it it does kind of hurt my fingers. So, you know, that's something. And it doesn't really go on too solidly, so it's kind of like, eh. But yeah, again, another another issue that I have with it. With the tightness, at least. So there we go. And let me just make sure. That's, I, don't, I don't really care for the feet because the thing is, the way they have it, like, it's not flat. So it's kind of hard to get them to stand. That's where you want these thrusters to come in as heel spurs. Because I do notice I have issues getting them to stand when I do that. But there you go. Use the thrusters and he's good to go. And we're almost there. So now we'll go ahead and just remove these blasters here at the bottom. 
And they actually are labeled, the wings are labeled. This one has an R, this one has an L. So we'll fold up this bit, and then we'll fold up this bit. Actually, we'll fold up that bit first, then we'll do this one. And you can see the purple does line up very nicely there. Next, we'll do it on this wing. So we'll do this part first, and then this part. And then I think I forgot actually, which one was this one? This one was, I like how they label them. This one was left. So, I'm going to take this. And there is a hinge there you can see, so it just folds around the leg. Now you have the wing nicely put away, tucked away. And then do it on this side. And there we go, now we got both of them done. And then we can just take the weapon bits if you want, we have them left over. And if you want, uh, you can take these, and there's a tab here. What you want to do is bring this forward. Oh wow, that actually came all the way out. Usually that's really hard to do. Again, that's another tightness issue is getting these missiles all the way out. Wow, it actually... Oh, I don't think I'm going to get this one out all the way. Oh no, I did. Well, for the most part. Eh, got it more than before. Usually that one's really hard to get out. It's really hard to get these missile pods to show. But hey, awesome, I got it. So if you want, you can flip out these handles, and he can hold them. And he's got these cool, you know, missiles pods going on. Not bad, not bad. Preferably, I prefer my missiles to be shoulder mounted, but that's one way. What I like to do with these, I think looks better, is uh, take the missiles and just bring them out like that. And let's see, I think I would like it like this. Yeah, and he has tabs on the sides of his arms. So do that. And then you can have the missiles on his arms, and then he can just hold the pistol in his hand. I like that better. That's my preferred look, and that's how I go about that. You get those features in. There you go. It's not his feature standing. So yeah, this is my preferred airburst look. If I can get it, there you go. With the pistols. The pistols are very nice. I really do like the dual pistols. I think that's pretty cool. And there you go. There's airburst, fully transformed with his weapons and everything. He's got the blades on his arms. I like the shoulder armor. The pistols look cool. I like the missiles. It's just really nicely done. We brought out another shade of purple here for the chest, and that's that's great. I like that. So just going over some of the detailing, guys. He's got a lot of mold detailing all along him. He's got some pa uh, painted vein there. He's got some vents that are painted here at the bottom for his knees. He's got some purple and silver. He's got more purple and gray for the feet. He's got some more gray joints showing for his hips and, and knees. I really do like how the joints are painted independently from the rest of the body just to make it stand out. I think that's cool. He's got this nice new shade of purple showing off for the chest and crotch plate that look very nice. And he's got some clear purple here for the front of the chest. That's really cool. Some nice more silver painted vents. And then at the top he's got some more like grayish painted vents. So very great job. Basically we've got a color palette of gray, silver, dark gray, uh, dark purple, violet, and like lavender. So, and brown. Obviously brown is like the main one. But it, it comes together very well. I think they did a good job of this and I, I really do like this figure. It's a nice representation of Blast Off for sure. He's definitely a great representation of him. Now for his articulation, he does have ball jointed uh, shoulder pads and hinge shoulder pads so you can get those out of the way if you want. So you can bring up the arms. They are kind of weird. The shoulders don't really go up. It's the kind of like the bicep goes up. So it's a bit awkward, but it's better than nothing. You can also rotate it as well. And it looks kind of weird. It's kind of like the way it's segmented. The arm looks kind of weirdish. Does have a double jointed elbow, so that's good. You can bring it even backwards too, because the way it, it's, I guess it's for transformation. I'm not really too sure, but his elbow's a bit awkward. You can see when you bend it, it's kind of like gone. But you can that allows for it to go backwards, so it's you know something. And then you do have a rotatable wrist, and that's about it for the arms. His head is on a ball joint, but it kind of can look up, not too much. It kind of looks down. It looks down pretty much pretty well. And then rotation there, and we're good. So not bad for the head. I think that's enough. I mean, we don't really need too craziness for the head. Rotation at the waist. You can rotate it. That is part of his limb transformation, but there you go. So if you had any issues with the waist, they do move. You can bring out the hips. They go out all the way, they go back. They are ratcheting backwards, I guess. Eh, maybe not. Maybe it was just stiff. Well, it kind of ratchets. It's, a, it's a, a soft ratchet. It's not really loud or anything, but you can feel it. Bend at the knee, not quite 90, but it's enough. You get the job done. Again, I really do like how it looks mechanical for those joints. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, the ice cream man is here. 
No, I'm not gonna go. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need ice cream. Then he's got ball jointed ankles and hinge. They are ball jointed and hinge, so you can. And they're on mushroom pegs as well, as I showed before. So good amount of articulation for the feet. If you have any weird feeted poses you need done, you need him to stand in a crazy way to do some flying poses. He can get the job done. So very nice, solid amount of articulation. It's all just stiff enough to where it's not like too stiff, but it's not too soft. I think the joints are fine. As I, as I said before, he is a very stiff figure. I don't have an issue with the joints. I think they're fine. I think it's just the transformation pieces that could use a bit of loosening up. Taking a look at that head sculpt, it is spot on blast off. I love it. He's got that dark face plate. He's got the squareness going on the sides of the head and the cheeks. And then he's got like a triangular point, sort of, at the forehead with that purple bit shown off. It's like a ventish looking thing. Face is pretty smooth as far as the faceplate goes. There's not really too much crazy detail in there, but it, it's good. It looks fine. I do like it. This gets the job done. He can, you know who this is. You look at it and you see blast off, so that's cool. He does have very nice uh, light piped eyes in that purpley violet color, and the light piping on him is actually very well done. Unfortunately, just my lights just don't really, you know, you can't really see the light piping with my lights. Unfortunately, not really, but. Take my word for it, the light piping is pretty solid. It's just my lights are not set up at the right angles. But very cool. So here we have Air Birds paired up with Masterpiece Wheeljack. So you can see he's right there probably in the Masterpiece as far as the size goes. He obviously has way more surface detailing and such and stuff going on than he would be for a Masterpiece. Masterpieces are pretty basic as far as their surface detailing goes. They, they are supposed to be accurate to the actual cars and such. So they don't want to look, you know, too intense. So, size he's good, but design, eh, it's, it's, it's about halfway there. I'd say he, he does have a good G1 vibe to him at the same time. He definitely looks like he'd be more upgraded and current. And then here we have our Voyager class Cyclonus. I haven't even reviewed him yet. I just pulled him out of the box right now, but he's actually looking pretty nice. There is a comparison for them two. They do look nice together. I think this is a pretty nice comparison. I don't know if Bruticus was there when Cyclonus was around. Actually, I think it was there. I think it was... Who was it? Who was it that got turned into, like, the sweeps and all of them? It was, like, the Insecticons and some randoms. I don't remember. Some guys got turned. I think it was, like, some Thundercracker, Skywarp. And then, like, the Insecticons got turned into these, these sweeps and all of them. So, there you go. There's a nice little comparison. He looks like he's working well with the Generations line. I think this is a good Generations figure. All right, so to get him into his limb mode, basically the same as you'd see for... Any other type of limb mode where it's just, let's go back into vehicle mode. At least because he's an arm. Let's go back into vehicle mode, but not all the way. So go ahead and get the foot back. There you go. Bring the foot all the way up. There you go. This one's going to pop off. Yes, it did. And bring it up. Unfortunately, some of the paint isn't wanting to stay too well on the feet. At least the gray bits. I noticed that the gray bits, the paint likes to come off a little. So I might have to fix those up. Yeah, I can see some, some of the grays not holding up well. Yeah, well, we're going to have to fix that. Anyways, uh, then we'll combine. Well, for now, we'll combine the, the feet. You know, tab them back together. Don't push them up. Leave them like that. And then you want to rotate the waist. And basically, we have the bottom half of the legs done. Everything is the way it should be. Fold up the hands. Don't need hands in the limb. Or at least we don't need the little hands in the limb. You know what I mean. We do need hands, but not these hands. You need that big old hand. That Boudicca's hand. There you go. And this is kind of weird. What you want to do, well, okay, we'll do this first. We'll get rid of the head. Pretty much transform the upper body back into the limb mode. There you go. And at least now the head's gone. The head's pretty much, like, gone. You're not really going to notice it. Oh, well, wow, the light piping looks really cool from this angle. It looks very dark, but cool. Bring this around. Careful with that. There you go. So you want to have that like that. This is where things get a little complicated. Let's bring up these bits. And what you want to do is bring it, let's see, like this. I think you want to rotate this like that and have it like that. Yeah. I think this is how you want it. All right. So you have the shoulder like this. And what you want to do is rotate it so it faces kind of backwards-ish. So that way you can bring up the top part of the sh shoulder like this. There you go, and you want to fold it like this, this joint, and that's how you want to have the arm. But the thing is, you want to have this kind of folded in, which is kind of hard to do both at once. 
like there isn't another hinge here to really get it in because you want to have this down but you want to have this up and it's really hard to do that so like you just kind of have to mess with it until things want to fit in at the proper way because you do want these to be like inward but the problem is you have to have these panels in like that you can't have them out like because then it won't go down so we just kind of have to find like the middle ground so that's something like that and I think let's see like that Oh, that's the best I could do is like that. There you go. I think I got it. I think I actually got it. Then you want to have it like that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I got it. Okay, so you want to have it looking like that. There you go. And there's the arm. The I do have the hand, but that comes with the Fierce Attack, their version of... Oh, wait. I forgot. I actually want to flip up this... Here we go. That clear bit right there. Very important. And we can bring out the combiner bit. Yeah. There you go. Very solid, bring that down, fold this inward. There you go. Now we have it done. And then the hand, like I said, was coming with Fierce Attack, so that'll be with him. And then we can have a completed arm. But very nice, you can see it's not too bad looking. It's a little in between the arm and the, or I mean, it's a little in between the robot and vehicle mode. But it does have a nice bend there. You can use the, the hips and the knees if you need for any of that articulation. My only one complaint is after all this tightness issues, the, the legs don't like to stay in too well. So it's like really like the one part I would love to be pretty consistently tight and it likes to pop apart. But it's whatever, you know, you just mess with it when you need to. But that's how that's supposed to be. And if you want, you can take the blasters and then just peg them up here. Oh, whoops. Actually, you know what? I forgot. You can put the blasters up there. And I forgot to put these bits back in. <laughs> So, we'll go ahead and just ring down these. Ooh, now it wants to be tight. Yeah, it's easier if you just push down at the missiles. There you go. It's really tight. There you go. Once you get them in, like, to the first half, then you can use that little tab, but, like, it's a, it's a struggle. There you go. So, we'll take them, um, line them back up. They kind of tab in, not really. I mean, that's not the most solid point. What is the solid point is you tab or peg them in here. Forgot to do this. If I can find it, and line up the tabs. I probably should get these out of the way. That might help. There you go. Line everything up. Oops. Nope, nope. Ah, I just undid stuff. There you go. And then, there you go. Now he's in his proper configuration. He should be like that. I'm probably missing the chunk of his tail there. But that is how you want it. You want to have it like this, and then. That's your arm. That's how you have your arm mode. So very nicely done. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Go ahead and comment, like, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Go ahead and follow me on Tumblr and Twitter at Mication, as well as Instagram at Mechas of Mine Heart. You can find all my pictures, recent purchases, who's making what, what's coming out, all that good stuff and more, and little sets and scenes I make. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time.